Hi, welcome to How to Repair. In this video, I'm going to show you how to change a soap drawer hose. This is the hose that connects from the bottom of the soap drawer to the drum. When the machine fills with water, the hose takes the detergent and the water through to the drum. Now, this machine was thrown out due to having a new door seal fitted, but the machine was still leaking. But it was leaking from the left-hand side of the machine. On the right hand side of the machine, you normally have the pump and you have a hose that runs from the bottom of the drum to the pump, which can also leak. And you have a hose going from the pump to your waste, uh, waste unit where the water is pumped out of the machine. Now, if it's coming from the right hand side of the machine, there's a good chance that it is one of these items. If it's coming from the center of the machine, there's a good chance it could be the door seal. But when it's coming from the left of the machine and the machine is level, remember water can track across if the machine is not level. But if it's coming from the left hand machine, it's usually a problem with either the drum or possibly the fill hose. What I'll do is I'll fill the machine now so you can see where the water is coming from and I'll show you how to change the hose. This video is on Hotpoint and Indeset and Ariston machines. And this is on the machines where the front panel will not come off. In other words, the cabinet is welded together. Now we've started the machine. The machine is filling. Now if it starts leaking on the fill cycle, you have a good idea that it may be the water valve that's leaking, the two or three hoses that are coming from the water valves to the soap box that may be leaking, which I'll show you in a minute. The soap box itself may be damaged or leaking, or this hose. Now, as you can see on the floor here, on the bottom left, we have now got a drip. And if you've got a drip, and this is in your kitchen at your home, you may not be able to see things like this easily. So I suggest you slide a piece of newspaper under the machine and this will be able to identify where the area of water leakage is coming from. If it's coming from the right hand side, as I said earlier, it would be to do with the sump hose or the pump or the waste hose. Or again, it could be the, from the drum on the right hand side. But now we can clearly see that this water is leaking on the floor and we need to understand where it's coming from before we decide on what component to try and change. So before I start taking the door seal off to have a look, I'm going to take you underneath the machine so you can see where the water is coming from. Now, as you can see, the water is coming down the concrete block here at the front and there's a little bit up on the suspension at the top here, but there's only a small drop. But the water is constantly dripping here. This means it's coming either from the soap box or the hose, uh, fill hose, which is the, uh, the soap drawer hose, sorry, and it's coming down. Now, the water has slowed up a little bit because the machine isn't filling anymore. So this gives me a good indication it might not be the drum but we still need to understand where the water is coming from. What we'll do now is we'll cancel the wash and turn the machine to empty. Drain all the water from the machine. You need to do this reasonably quickly uh, because we still want to see where the water is draining from on the left hand side. Uh, if you leave it too long between doing this process it may dry out on the actual concrete and actual drum and you won't be able to see where it's coming from. Okay I've emptied the machine full of laundry. You need to unplug it from the power supply and we need to take this little spring off which is called the retaining clamp. Take this off the door seal Peel back the door seal and I'm going to turn this into the drum. Now if you look down here you can see the water has been tracking from the sopos. So it's either coming 
dripping from the attachment at the top of the soap box or it's coming from the hose at the bottom. So we need to take this off. Okay, the first thing we need to do is remove the soap drawer insert. And on these you need to be careful because this pin can be a problem and the plastic can get brittle. So this just slides out, but I do suggest holding this at the same time. It is well worth cleaning your soap box, especially the siphon system. There's another video on the website showing you how to clean soap drawers. Uh, and how to make sure the whole soap compartment is completely clear. Then at the top here you have two screws. We need to remove these. Remember all this work should be done with the appliance disconnected from the electricity supply. Now these screws normally you have to give them a little tap to get them out. just because they're in an insert. Now we need to take the lid off the machine. The lid comes back a little up. On a lot of these uh, welded cabinet machines, sometimes they will slide backwards. Sometimes you have to lift them up and slide them off. This now gives you access to the soap compartment. What we need to do now is disconnect the electrics and also take off the back plate. There are two screws, one holding the plastic, another screwed into one of the water valves. Now this is a hot and cold fill machine, which I do like because if you connect them to the hot water system, you will use less electricity. But a lot of the machines now are cold fill only. Right, you will need to press down this flap to gain this plastic cover. It's just a little clip at the top and the two screws or one screw if you only have a cold fill. Now we need to disconnect the electrics from the water valve. Now using a small screwdriver, these electrical connections have got little lugs on the back. Press it backwards and give it a pull up. Do not worry about mixing these up. You can take a photograph of which way round they go, but these have got location lugs which will only allow it to go into its correct position. In other words, you can't swap them over. So we have those two. Then we have the hot on the back here. Pull the wiring out the way. The next thing that we're going to do is remove the facial panel completely off the machine. This will give us much more access. So there's two screws to the steel bar on the top. Some models will vary. Take the steel bar away. Do notice that it goes underneath the plastic. Once you've done that, you need to be careful of any plastic clips when you remove the panel and slide off the electrical connection for the panel. There's only one position for this to go on. Remove the panel and put it safely. This now gives us clear access to the fill hose. This is where it becomes a little tricky. You'll notice on the side of the soap drawer, I don't know if you can see this, the hose has got a little clip that you lift up and take off. This will allow the hose to come off. They are quite a tight fit. And you may need to use a little bit of a screwdriver to ease them off. This will allow the whole hose uh, so soap drawer to come off. Now we can see here it's been leaking slightly, but it's still quite dry. So it doesn't look like the water is coming from here, but at some point there may have been a blockage in the soap drawer and water was leaking. If water is leaking for a long period of time, you will get clear distinctive marks like this. Now you can see inside the hose all the uh, bacteria and mould that has built up. 
I will be doing another video after this one to show you how to clean a washing machine uh, correctly. And cleaning this hose is one of the areas and the soapbox, which is a good idea to clean to stop mold, mold building up. Now this hose only is a push fit. And you can see here, the water is all over the bottom. And this hose actually looks like it doesn't have a hole in it. It is actually only the gasket which has been leaking. And this uh, rubber may have perished around the areas here and it will just need a good clean up. I would recommend refitting it with our d -ball glue which you can see in the corner of the screen popping out now and I'll also put a link on the description. I normally put a little bit of the glue around, clean up both surfaces, make sure they're dry before refitting. If you look down here you can see it does need a good clean up so what I'm using is just a normal kitchen scourer just spraying some detergent on there go down here give this whole area a good clean try to get inside as well because the rubber sits on both sides after cleaning make sure you dry it thoroughly and I would suggest leaving it 10-15 minutes there is no other way to access this uh, soap, soap drawer hose unless you lift the whole drum out of the machine. But I have also done another video to show you how to remove a drum from a hot point and intercept machine. I'll put the link to that below as well. Okay, we're going to put some glue on the new hose. This does take quite a bit of time to get off your fingers and I'm just going to put a little all the way around. Make sure you're getting it into the groove and I'm just going to put a little on my finger and smear that around the actual opening just to give it a good contact. It only takes a few minutes to go off. You can also already see it changing colour there. This D-ball is the best glue for domestic appliances, dishwashers, washing machines. Make sure the hose is completely inserted correctly. line it up and now we're ready to reassemble the machine. When fitting a new hose it's a good idea to put a little bit of detergent just around the soap drawer end. This will help the hose slide on because it is a very tight fit. You don't need to worry about it because the hose is on the outside and water's dropping down. This will uh, disappear over a period of time. So put the soap drawer down and slide the hose. It's quite a tricky job. Once the hose is on make sure you get the little band over the soap drawer on the side here. That's all lining up perfectly and we're ready to reassemble. The first thing I would do is mount our plastic back into location and this drops down first and then clips in. It will just snap fit. Now we can put the screws in. Reconnect the electrics to the panel first make sure that the plastic clips are clearly over the panel correctly. Once this is in, locate it so the soap drawer and everything is perfect. Now we'll insert the steel bar 
and remember this can only go on one way because there's a recess lug for a plastic clip here. And it goes under the lugs. Once it's in place, do up the screws. Okay, reinserting the electrics. So blue was front. As I said, it will only go in one way, but you should always really take a photograph. And the red goes at the back here. Now it's a good idea to tuck this behind and also I do recommend putting a couple of cable ties on because this cable sometimes is not clipped here and when the machine is shaking heavily sometimes the concrete block can catch the wiring. So I try to always keep the wiring out of the way uh, sometimes the manufacturers have not quite thought about it correctly when building them and the cables can drop and occasionally this is a common problem that this cable here doesn't stay in place so I've got that tucked in I'll just cut the top piece off that cable tight so it doesn't interfere with the lid and the cable then can go into its original holder but it's still a little too close there for my liking and there is a hole here where I can get another cable tie through so I'm just going to put that on there and that keeps the wiring neatly out of the way the last thing we need to do is pop the two front screws in. Just take them hand tight and quarter of the turn because you don't want to strip the threads on the plastic. Now we need to insert the soap drawer. This slides down a runner along the top and also along the bottom so make sure you get it on square it will clip into place and then you need to make sure it clips in nicely there just softly check the soap drawer is working correctly just quickly going to put the door seal on for you start at the top try not to get the seal twisted at all and just work your way round both sides now we need to fit the spring back on or the band and I normally find that these bands are fitted with the spring down in the bottom left hand side a little bit more round than that somewhere at about seven eight o'clock then stretch the spring pull the band round Make sure it goes into the lip of the seal correctly. Okay, I've re-put the laundry in, just connecting it to the electrical supply. Make sure the floor is completely dry after you've done the job so you can check that you still have no leak. Just put the machine onto a short wash. Okay, the machine's been running now for 10-15 minutes and it's no leak at all. It's all cured, the problem is cured. The machine was thrown out and for the cost of 10 to 15 pound, this was repairable. Not only saving you money for yourself, but also the environment of all this wastage that we have in the world. The d ball glue was really all that was needed, which only costs five, six pound a tube. The hose, could have been rep uh, not replaced but we did replace it with another hose uh, because the actual seal around the rim had deteriorated. There are other videos at the website showing you how to replace the door seal, the pump, the sump hose and the waste hose uh, to assist you in further repairs. Remember to buy all the parts off us as that's what keeps us going and able to make these videos for you. And if we really helped you, you can always support the website by clicking on the Bipolar Beer. Thanks very much indeed for watching.